Uh, Colorado Republican Congressman uh, Ken Buck. Uh, Congressman, uh, good to see you. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, one thing, um, I don't know if you've heard that we've actually been praising you uh, on the show, and I, I hope that doesn't hurt you at home. It will. I, <laughs> I hope it doesn't hurt you at home. You're a very conservative Republican. It's very important to you that whoever is the next Speaker of the House acknowledge the fact that Joe Biden won the presidency. It's just a fact that he did. And you want the next speaker to acknowledge that? I, I want the next speaker to acknowledge that. I also want to make sure that we don't have somebody who was involved in the activities uh, surrounding January 6th. And I think that if we have a presidential candidate who uh, right now is leading, who denies that, the, that he lost the election um, and was uh, obviously behind what happened on January 6th, and we have a speaker in a similar situation, we have 20 Republicans sitting in Joe Biden districts right now, by districts that Joe Biden won in 2020, and those 20 Republicans are going to be at risk. There's no way we win the majority if the message we send to the American people is that we believe that the uh, election uh, was, was stolen and we believe that uh, January 6th was okay. It was a tour of the Capitol. And I think that there are, I mean, this is probably one of the reasons why Republicans have had trouble winning elections in 2018 and 2000. Uh, no, I'm sorry, in 2022, and in, right? I mean, like all the other, and the, the midterms in 2018, 2020, and then 2022, right? I mean, all those other midterm elections have had problems because there are a lot of suburban voters who might like some of the things that Republicans are offering, but they like democracy too. Uh, well, I think uh, one of the messages, we, were, we, we underperformed. Republicans in the House underperformed. The expectation was that we would have a 30-vote majority, a 25-vote majority. We, in fact, have a four-vote majority right now. And so part of the dysfunction that you see is the fact we don't have a large enough majority. And that I attribute to the fact that the message to the American people is muddled. It isn't that we're the uh, party of the rule of law. Because obviously we don't believe in the rule of law if we aren't willing to say that the election results were, were accurate. But you're the only one speaking up about it like this. The only one that I can hear. I mean, even Congressman Bacon, who I would think, I mean, he, 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 didn't, he voted the same way you did to uphold the election, et cetera, but he's not saying things like this. Well, uh, Jake, I'll, I am not running for speaker, but I appreciate your kind words. I, I think that uh, more Republicans need to admit uh, what's going on, and, and we need to move beyond uh, w the narrative that, that is out there. But do other, one, do other Republicans feel the same way you do? They're just not willing to say it out loud? Absolutely. I, I have talked to a number of people who have come up to me and almost whispered, thank you. Um, and, and I know... Whispered? Yes. No, there, there is Why a, are they so... I don't understand. Why, what are they afraid of? Well, the Republicans who are going to vote against Jim Jordan on the second ballot, which will be more Republicans... More. Than, more. Absolutely. Um, uh, want the cover of saying, I voted for Jim Jordan, but now it's time to move on. The, the problem is they are afraid of a primary. The calls that are coming in are, are ridiculous. They're, they're in the hundreds, if not thousands, uh, that are coming into every office right now. The grassroots uh, campaign is, is very strong for Jim Jordan. Um, and that's because of the far right activists that are that are pushing this, the political operatives like Hannity, et cetera. I, I would say right, not far right. It's being, yeah. being on the right. OK. But yes. Uh, I, would, I would say, yes, there, there are conservative activist groups that are uh, calling in across the country. So you and I are old enough to remember when Tom DeLay was a very effective majority leader. But there was always the push that um, if he became speaker, he was just he was just too toxic. It would be bad for the House. And I feel like he even understood that, that he was just too radioactive. Jordan might be kind of in that vein, but maybe he doesn't understand that. Well, you know, uh, Jim Jordan has talked about defunding the, the FBI. Uh, he's talked about some things that are fairly radical to most Americans, the folks in the middle who we need to win if we're going to win elections. So, yes, I think, I think that he may not realize that. I um, mean, he may want to back off some of those statements if he does become speaker. But right now, those are the statements that he's made. You voted for Tom Emmer, but you don't like Tom Emmer. <laughs> First of all, is, I thought he was like a nice guy. He's not he, a nice guy? No, he's my friend. And I was oh. trying to make a joke. Oh, you're making a joke. Okay, and, okay. And, and it didn't go over very Who well. Who do you think would actually be speaker? How about somebody like Tom Cole, Tom Emmer? I mean, is there Steve Womack? Is there somebody who's just like conservative, Republican, and just kind of like a statesman type character? Yeah, I think... I think the next move that was discussed in conference a little bit last night was to have a 30-day speaker. If a supplemental comes over from That's the... That's like a 30-day fiancé show. I'm not going to go there. <laughs> okay. But if, uh, if, if something comes over from the White House, a supplemental comes over from the White House, we're able to vote on it. We have 30 days to go in conference and hash this out. It, it's sort of a, a pause, but it allows the House to operate. Yeah, 30-day. That's messy, man. You guys need to get... What about you? No? No. But thanks. All right. I don't say I didn't do anything for you. All right. Thank you so much, Congressman Buck. Good to see you. Let's talk with my panel right here. Uh, uh, Kevin, 
How you doing, buddy? Good. How you doing? <laughs> so you you uh you're you you've worked for these fellows on Capitol Hill. Well, first of all, just like what what do you make of this? Well, you know the thing when I worked up on Capitol Hill, you always had a sense of inevitability that there was a trend line operating in the right direction and something would happen, whether it was a bill on the floor or a leadership decision. Right now, I'm at a loss to see how this thing ends. Like I just do not see somebody or enough leverage by the leadership to drive towards 217 votes for one candidate. And so I think this drags on a lot longer than we think. But how can that be, Jamie? I mean, there are just like unobjectionable House Republican leaders like I just mentioned, like Tom Womack. I mean, um, how can you ask me Steve, Steve Womack, Tom Cole, Tom Emmer. These are just, you know, good House Republican leader types. Like what's I don't even understand. Look. Remember 15 rounds? Remember yeah. that uh, Kevin McCarthy. But that was an objection to Kevin thing. McCarthy because they didn't think he was trustworthy. I, I, I understand say that. Two things. One is I think Congressman Buck may be the bravest member of the Republican uh, conference right now to we're, come we're out and hurting say. You. We, we keep we're, hurting, we're, 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 we're hurting I, you. I'm very sorry to say this. Start but saying but bad things you about You sound him. like we're Liz. We're going to hurt him in his, in his re-election. You sound like Liz Cheney right now. Oh, my God. Now we're Sorry. really doing it. But, but the reality is what the congressman is mm. saying is common sense. The problem is you're the only one we're hearing it from. Yeah. I, I am hearing from, from other Republican members, though, about something you mentioned, Congressman, and that is the notion of letting uh, the Speaker pro tem, Patrick McHenry, be empowered to go forward 30 days, 45 days, maybe be extended well, as a compromise. As long as the congressman hasn't been uh, secretly whisked out. Uh, let me just, <laughs> what, what do you think of that idea? We had Congressman, I think it was Jimenez was uh, on, the, right. on the show earlier saying this, the idea of just like give, give McHenry some powers just so we can do supplemental bills, just so we can do, what, what do you make of that idea? I, I think it's a good idea uh, for a number of reasons. One, we're getting beat up right now, so yeah. it, it would pause that. Two, uh, there is a very serious world situation in, in Israel, Ukraine. Uh, we would allow the Congress to function. We haven't gotten a supplemental from the White House, but it would still allow us to function. Um, and, and third, it would give us time to get into conference behind closed doors and find that person to lead us for one year. We also have time running out on the clock for uh, the, the, the shutdown if we don't fund the government. Yeah, until you guys sneak him out like Taylor Swift at a <laughs> restaurant, we're going to keep we're going to keep doing that. Just a warning. Jake, Just a warning. you know, listening to you talk about, isn't there some conventional conservative Republican that yeah. there were some of those? Eric Cantor was one. He lost in a primary. John Boehner was one. He was ousted by a conference with a Jim Jordan inspired Freedom uh, yeah. Caucus on the rise. Uh, Kevin McCarthy may have been seen as one for uh, many Republicans at one point. Uh, he was just vacated from his job. Th the reason is the Republican Party has moved. And right. so what is sort of a, a conventional conservative establishment Republican that can unify that way is no longer so for the, the, a critical swath of the Republican Party that is driving a lot of the energy inside the I party. think the key to understanding this is not to think rationally, right. <laughs> to think in a very nonlinear way. But one of the questions I'd have for the congressman, if I may, is what about the legality uh, problems that you might have with giving, empowering an acting speaker? And also, this is still an institution that operates on precedence. The, precedence that you, the precedent that you would set, if you were to give an acting speaker uh, authority, does that not con some concerns that the, that the uh, the conference has on that? There's no precedent for vacating a speaker. This is the first time that's ever mm -hmm. happened. So you're right, there's no precedent for giving powers of, you know, on a limited basis. I, I think what you probably have to do is just trust um, uh, Patrick that he would give up power in 30 days. So he is the speaker. There's just an agreement that in 30 days we would have a new speaker or 45 or whatever. The and he has is. said he doesn't want the job, right? He, is, he has been. Well, he said he doesn't want to be nominated by the Democrats for the job. If it was right. a Republican and um, one Republican has uh, said he will file the motion, uh, that's a little different. So he needs to go vote. So we're going to let him go. We're going to take a commercial <laughs> break. Thank you one and all for being here. Uh, when we 